my first experience at a nightclub was awful. It was, it really was. Not everything that went wrong that could go wrong went wrong, but almost everything that could go wrong went wrong. So I was with two other fellas and we pre-drank at the house and I also had like a tin in my pocket that I hadn't opened and we got into the taxi and we never got to the night club. Got ourselves in, got a photograph and all too, and <coughs> then we went down and sat at the tables. <coughs> now we were pretty early. You know, we got there, must have been about seven or eight, maybe nine or so, but there wasn't really an awful lot that was there. And we were there for maybe an hour or so, just waiting for everybody else to come in. And I took the tin out of my pocket, set it on top of the table, opened it and drank out of it. Now, I didn't know at that time that you weren't allowed to bring your own alcohol into a nightclub. I genuinely did not know that there. It took the bouncers maybe about half an hour or so, or 40 minutes, to notice that I was sitting at the table with a tin. You know, because whenever you go to a nightclub, you're supposed to buy their alcoholic beverages, not bring in your own. And I was walking around with it. You know, and it took them that long to realise I had my own tin. And they actually, um, one of the bouncers came over to me, I looked at me, I seen the tin, and I was like, really? So he put his arm around me, and was like, no, you're going out. And I said to him, um, I, I didn't know you weren't allowed to do that. And I was, I was genuine, I wasn't trying to be a smart ass, I said to him, I genuinely didn't know. And they basically escorted me outside the grounds of the, the nightclub, as everybody else was coming in, everybody else was starting to come in, and people see me being put out. And um, <clears throat> the other guys with phoned, uh, we'll call them such and such, and said them, uh, Jimmy's been kicked out of the nightclub because he brought a tin of alcohol in, and he was like, he was livid, you know, because uh, somebody asked if he knew, drove us up, and that person was unable to come back. You know, it's a long drive from where the, we actually uh, set out from, it was, and they didn't have the fuel, and it wasn't really, you know, fair to do that there, to ask that person to come back. So the chances, uh, or my chance was just to sit there for the next three or four hours outside in the cold, waiting until the, the nightclub was over. And for <coughs> the bus or the taxi to come to collect us, I think it was a taxi we got back. And um, the other guy I was with, he was on the phone to such and such, and he was like, uh, put the bouncer on the phone, put the bouncer on the phone right now. And uh, the bouncer refused to take the phone, but um, this, this the other guy managed to convince the bouncer to take the phone, and such and such said, and look, um, He's a, like, Jamie's an absolute idiot, yes, something along, something along the lines of, you know, he's an absolute idiot, I know, um, if you let him back in, I'll deal with him when he gets back to the house, and um, the bouncers then, to my surprise, like, ten minutes later, came back out and said to me, oh, uh, such and such uh, had a wee word with us, and uh, you're going to be dealt with whenever you go back to theirs, and <clears throat> I think it's really down to the fact that, um, I wasn't kicking off or shouting abuse at the bouncers. I think it's more the fact I was just genuine and they realised I made an honest mistake. So what went up to the bouncer that caught me and just apologised to him. You know, and uh, I didn't mean it because I genuinely didn't know that you weren't supposed to do that there. Um, I got into alcohol pretty late. Um, a lot of people, some people, like, over here in the UK, you can have a pint in a restaurant uh, with a meal. You're allowed to do that there, but you have to be a team to go to pubs and get drunk. <clears throat> and I did have the odd one. Like I would have just drank occasionally. I wouldn't have drank like every weekend. Like you know, near enough what I would <laughs> been doing the last few years. So I, I was late. It wasn't until after that there that I would drink regularly. Like you know, weekends or so, and went out to places, and clubs and all. So there was that. Um. So I went and I was with the other two guys again, and um, we're sitting down, uh, chatting away. And this other fella comes over and just introduces himself, you know, he was a nice guy, nice enough. And then um, shook all our hands and, you know, talking away and he went away and the guys I was with, I, th I think they said, I couldn't understand the word of what that guy was talking about, couldn't understand him. And then I went up and got myself a drink and didn't realise that uh, the other two fellas had washed their hands. And I was like, why did you wash your hands? Why did you make a point of it there? Did you not smell his hands? It smelled like shit. And I'm like, oh, okay, no, I didn't notice. I thought they were fine. <laughs> Alright, I was kind of, I was just a, a, a tad bit drunk at that point. I started to feel very unwell. You know, I started to feel nauseous. And I went straight to the, the toilets and threw up a bit. And I was retching and retching and retching. 
and by the time the uh, the nightclub was over, um, I went to the bathroom again to go be sick, and I seen that very same fella who shook our hands earlier, um, I turned around, there he was sitting in the cubicle, taking a dump, and the door was wide open. So I went up, and I just um, discreetly closed the door for him, you know, to maintain his modesty, you know, and then he gets back up, comes out of the cubicle, recognises me, and he's like, uh, just pulls his trousers up, doesn't even wipe, and he's like, this place is fucking shit. And then uh, him and I just walk back outside, uh, not we walk back to the uh, reception, <laughs> and I really didn't feel too good at this point. I really felt very ill, and I just sat down. I sat there, and uh, I just leaned back and closed my eyes like that. There, you know, we just uh, waiting for the, the seconds to pass, and he went over to me and said, um, "You're better off just standing up because the bouncers are going to kick you out again." And um, I said to him, I don't care, they can throw me out again, it's nearly over, we've only got 15-20 minutes left of the scrap. And one of the fella, another fella came up to me and says, I seen you getting thrown out by a bouncer, how did you get back in? I don't know, I'm going to have to speak to such and such, get a bollock in and find out myself, I haven't a clue. You know, because the other guys, we, we didn't know what he said, <laughs> but you know, um, so I went back to the house after that there and all, most of all, like most of the night, I was going to the bathroom and retching. Nothing would come up. Nothing. I was just retching, and I was trying to make myself sick. I was trying to book. I was trying, but nothing would come up. I just went back to bed and I just uh, let it pass. I felt a bit better in the morning. The sickness was gone, but you know because of the lack of sleep and um, I just I felt rough, really rough. And then he uh, such and such said to me. Oh, I basically just said to the bouncer that you know you were an idiot, and if I let you back in, I'll deal with you the way I'm doing now. And um, surprisingly, the, the bouncers uh, agreed to that. There, you know. <laughs> uh, I thought that was. I thought that'd be a funny story to share with you all. You know, my first nightclub experience. You know, but I'd say you know most people uh, that go out to a nightclub for the first time probably don't have the best experience because you're you're just you're still learning you're very new to everything and I was 24 and I didn't know that you're not meant to bring your own alcohol in a nightclub or a pub you know that's like the number one rule that you don't do that there and I just, I just spent the whole night just following the other two guys around you know wherever they went I went you know and I just didn't feel too good and you know it was very it's extra it was extremely unlikely but I, I didn't really know what was wrong with me at the time it wasn't until later on like the next morning or so or maybe like towards the end if we were heading back to the house that I realized uh, why I felt so sick and it's because that guy must have went took a dump never washed his hands and then shook our hands the bastard you know what a dick and I'm pretty sure I've seen that fella in another local pub and I must bring it up to him you know but you know what he probably wouldn't even remember it like that this was back oh, it was in February or March of 2016 <laughs> you know so uh, but, but I, I learned from that there I learned you know to be careful you know I learned the do's and don'ts and I was very lucky that the bouncers were decent and gave me a second chance. <clears throat> that doesn't usually happen very often, you know, and it's probably because I didn't mouth off of them. Not that I would, because, you know, like, they were just doing their job and I was just being an idiot without knowing it. And I was reasonable with them when they were reasonable back. It's more with bouncers, if you be <coughs> a dick <coughs> with bouncers, you know, if you be a dick to them, they're obviously going to be a dick back to you and some of them will just not take the crap off you. And, you know, put you in a place right away. And then you get some bouncers that are just absolute assholes. I refused to drink alcohol as well. I just didn't want it because I didn't feel too good. And one of the guys said to me, you know, if you really want to have a good time, you're best just getting drunk. Because if you're going to be sober, you're not really going to enjoy it. But I was, I was more or less just taking everything in. Just, you know, wanted to see what it was like to be sober in a nightclub, you know, the first night. And then, obviously, the, the times that went back again, the end, the end, you know, for weeks or months on end, and they got absolutely wasted on it and had a great time. The bouncer was like this here at me, you know, he was he was glaring at me and it was, he thought I was going to come up to him and be a smart ass, but no, he's, I think he was just surprised that uh, I went up and apologised to him. And whenever I seen that bouncer, every other time I went back, I, went, I made a point of going up to him and just said hello, shaking his hand. That was my story. So um, if you guys have any, you know, I know there's, a, there's funnier stories than what I'm telling you right now. Everybody's had their first bad experience at a nightclub. Some of them, you know, were funny and some of them probably weren't so funny. But I would still like to hear, you know, what your first experience would have been. I'm genuinely interested. It's not it's not often that, you know, you get thrown out of a nightclub and then uh, you have a lifeline that gets you back in. And then everybody's like, you know, how did you do that there? I don't know. 
But I'm, I'm kind of glad that I wasn't left out in the cold because that would have sucked. Like, I would have just been ratchet out, you know. Okay, this guy we threw out was pretty much sober whenever we kicked him out. And now he's throwing up as if he's been drinking the entire night, you know. And he only had one tin with him. 